So a first class is always deserving of an introduction, is it not? Yes. Yeah. However, usually a teacher will introduce themselves and you will just sit and listen. So we're going to turn this into a game. Okay, so we're going to participate. I will introduce in Sanskrit, I will speak in Sanskrit, and I will gesticulate. This means I will show gestures. And your job is to focus and try to discern what I am saying. Okay, so I'm going to start, and then we will talk about what words you have figured out. So I will introduce myself. Namo, Namaha. You have to repeat, I'm introducing myself. Suswagatam. Mama Nama Andre. Aham Tava Samskritasya Atyapakaha Mitramwa Bhavami. Kshamam Tishtatu. Huh? Kshamam Tishtatu. Jalam Pibami. Hmm. Eta jalam swatishtamasti? Nahi. Tat jalam nasti? Tat chayamasti? Oh, sorry. Punar chayam pibami. Hmm. Eta chayam swatishtamasti? Swatishtam. Hmm? Swatishtam. Still listening, huh? Veda ha Athitam Ratwa Athitam Athitam. Hmm. Oh. Ah, Athitam. Ratwa Ratwa. Oh, Ratwa. Huh? Veda ha Athitam Ratwa Mama Samskritasya Kamam. Vavrde Kamam, huh? Kama. Kama. Vavrde, um, Balaha Vavrde, huh? Vavrde. Evam, Evam tat upadishami, huh? Evam tat upadishami. Okay? So, what have we picked out? We score points, huh? This is a game. You can, score ch you can score chocolate eggs. I've got eggs here. And I've got a big prize also, a big egg. Okay, it's going to be waiting here. Okay. Namo Namaha. Huh? Namaste. Salutations. Yeah, okay, what does it mean? I bow. Good. I like that you said that. In other words, I bow to you in respect. It doesn't just mean hello. Because hello, what is it? It's an empty word. So in other words, I acknowledge you for who you are. I acknowledge you that you're here. And I expect no changes of you. I see you as you are, and you see me likewise as I am. Therefore, I have no need to change you, because I don't know you, and everyone deserves to have a chance. In other words, I honor you the way that you are, thus I expect no changes of you. I'll let you be exactly the way that you are. Okay? And then I said, Mama, okay, what's my name? Okay, good, you got that. So, Mama, Nama, so my means uh, Mama, Nama, Andre. And then I said, Aham, Aham means? I am. Yeah, I, in other words, the subject is speaking. Tava, your, your. Samskritasya, that means this is a, a genitive, so in other words, off Sanskrit. And then I said, Atyapakaha. Atyapakaha? Yeah, so there's different teachers. There's Acharya, there's Guru. Atyapakaha is a grammar teacher. So I am a Atyapakaha in the context of Sanskrit classes. And then I said Mitramwa. Mitramwa? Friend. friend, yeah. Wa means or. In other words, I am your teacher or your friend. And then I said Vedaha, means the scriptures. 
And then I said, Adhitam. Adhitam means? Uh, that means learning. Okay. Yeah, that means studying, absorbing. And then Ratwa. Ratwa? Ratwa is a gerund. We will speak about gerunds. Is having enjoyed <coughs> Veda Ha Adhitam. In other words, having enjoyed the Veda studies. What happened? And then I said, Mama Samskritasya Kamam. In other words, my Kama. What's karma? My samskritasya karmam. My affection. Okay. A karma cannot only mean desire, it can also mean like uh, adoration or my uh, sense of likeness for something. So, mama samskritasya karmam vavrathe. What does vavrathe mean? Growing. Yeah, growing. So it increased. So, balaha increased. And then I said, evam, that means. Evam, thus, evam tat, tat always means that, evam tat, and then I said upadishami. Upadishami means therefore I teach it, therefore I show it. Okay? So that's the introduction. Now, sorry, uh, what is uh, tua? Huh? Tua. What's what? Tua. Aditam tua? Uh, ratwa, ratwa is having enjoyed. Yeah. yeah. So having enjoyed, having enjoyed what? <coughs> Vedaha adhitam, the studies. We will build our vocabulary slowly. So this means that if you're here without a piece of paper, then you will fall behind. We will talk about the logistics very soon. Okay. Well done. So uh, you have contributed. Who has contributed? You get an egg. Is an egg for you? A catch. No, you? No. <laughs> okay, who else has contributed? Rani over there. Rani has said, I bow. <laughs> who else has said something I heard? You had said something? Okay, good. Who else has said something? Huh? Oh, kids. Oh, they missed the eggs. Oh, no. We got a big prize, huh? so at the end of the lesson, whoever you know is able to remember something incredible, then they will get a golden egg. Huh? Or maybe we're going to use it in the next class. Okay, so about me, just a little bit. I think it's deserving to know a little bit more about um, who is this person that, sh that is speaking. So my Sanskrit career, actually I've always had a value for communication. For me, since the beginning, relating was always the number one value in life. That means how to effectively communicate with another person and not waste another person's time. And not only communicate with them, but also communicate with, you know, relate with one's own self. So it is really relating about oneself, people, and the world. And I guess I never learned how to relate properly in, in, at school or with my parents. So for that reason, it's always been something that's very important to me. So then around age 18 or 19, I started to study linguistics and I had a big fascination, and I still do. Linguistics is the study of language, how to communicate effectively and how to uh, just express oneself as precisely as possible. And I also liked memory. That was also a favorite topic of mine. How do we remember? That means I also learned a lot about accelerated learning. So I use accelerated learning in the teaching because, let's face it, we forget quickly and we need to help our brains to remember. So around, let's see, around, around 20, early 20s, I started to sort of, when I saw the word Sanskrit, it almost like it, you know, lit up everything my entire brain. I just liked the word Sanskrit and I always thought it was a sophisticated language uh, and I thought it was a language of precision and highly advanced. You know, it's highly refined in the way that it is expressed. And so I went to Thailand because I was doing Qigong teacher's training and Tai Chi Chuan, that was one of my uh, favorite things to do for a number of years and I went to Thailand, Chiang Mai, and I met this incredible 
fella who was just one of those fellows who says a few words, but when they say something, they really mean it. They, they say exactly what needs to be said, and it makes a difference. So I met this fella, and I was at a buffet taking some food, and he stood next to me because he was also taking some food. And he says, hey, come and join our group. I didn't know him. You know, I only met him yesterday, just a little bit, but I liked him. He liked me also. And I said, sure, I'll go. Now, just before I went to Thailand, by this moment, I already was thinking, I want to learn Sanskrit. But you know how it is. You don't know where to go, who to communicate, who do you even ask, and is it even possible? So my desire to learn Sanskrit was enormous. So he called me and I went over, and being the way that he is, he didn't say anything from there on. He just said, come over. So I said, yes. So I sat down and there was five people around the table. From that moment on, he said nothing, which is strange, right? You would expect to talk to this person who calls you over. And there was a last guy on the right, and he was an Indian. The only thing he said to me was, there's a Sanskrit course going on at the Australian National University. Instantly, I thought, yes, this is it. Right? So it's exactly what I wanted to hear. And everything about that moment said, yes, this is what I'm supposed to do. And so after I finished my course in Thailand, I came to Australia. And I think it was three months later that the course started. How many people showed up? How many do you think? Two, two, three. Just one. No. <laughs> no, Sanskrit's got a high interest. 65. Yeah, 60 or 70. It was a mixture between the university, physical attendance, and also webinars. Now, webinars are a little bit tricky because what happened five months later, how many, thing, how many people do you think stayed? <laughs> huh? Less than 50 percent. Uh, less than 50? Yeah. Keep. 50 and 20. Uh, say again? 15, 20. Uh, 20. Less? 10. <laughs> 10 to 15. Five? Very close, nine. Wow. nine. Nine or eight. Yeah, and I was one of them who stayed. So 65, it's so exciting. So that's why I said on the email, um, I'm not interested in curiosity seekers because I know how it is. There's an emotional excitement there and everyone always says yes to that emotion. But the moment the reality starts to hit, or the moment you start to learn about Sandhi and all of these grammar rules, then you start to see, well, this is not really for me. So I really need an intelligent, rational student and not one of those, you know, it's all exciting, so let's come. So reality is, even by session two, this class will probably be 10% less. I already know that. That's just the reality. <laughs> by week four, we will speak about what we're going to do this weekly or fortnightly. I'll do that at the end. This will be probably about, right? So, you know, it's going to reduce significantly. I know that. That's guaranteed. Um, because you've got life, you know, you've got family, and things will come. So we have to be realistic. And sometimes also 10 or 20% do not like the teacher because there's personal stuff that comes up. There's like, you know, they're too young, too old, too slow, too fast. Um, they remind me of someone. So all of these, <laughs> so all of these things we, we have no control over. So we have to be very realistic. So yes, there is a big class now and it's full and I know it's gonna be full. However, you know, reality is only the most committed will stay. So, and also the children, I'm very happy to see the children. They can always, if you, if you like to have them go, there's a lot of balls out there, and there's a playground out there, okay. So that's also there. Okay, let's talk about the structure of the course. So i say a little bit about myself, okay, and this will build on as we spend time together. The structure of the course is we're going to have a balance, a balance between what? It's going to be creating content. This means we're going to create our own Sanskrit content, which means both speaking and writing. Don't think that this class is going to be just me talking 
The advantage of physical classes over webinars is that you've got the audience to communicate with. That's the only way we're going to learn this language. Otherwise, even over web webinars, I know there's hundreds of webinars on YouTube, and you could have already done that by yourself. But the fact is, the attendance rate is very low on webinars, and there's no much commitment. When you're in class, there's nowhere to go. You're there. So that's the advantage with physical. That's the only reason why I'm hosting this, because I know the... Uh, how hard or challenging it can be over time. So creating, which means cr writing your own content and speaking it. Also, receiving. This means understanding. So if I say something, and then you will understand it. If you read something, you will understand it. So that means receiving, input. Then grammar. This is 90% of Sanskrit that we'll be spending in class. Grammar is where it's at. There's over 4,000 grammar rules in Sanskrit. And we're not going to learn all of them. There's only about maybe 500 plus we will learn. The most important ones. Just like in English, there's many hundreds of rules. But how many rules do we really know in English? Right? Not all of them. But we still communicate effectively, do we not? Yeah, so we don't have to now go all the way into, you know, scholarly mode. If you want to do that, that's fine. So besides grammar, which will be 90% of the time, also vocabulary. This is important because this is how you build on the language, right? So this means memorizing. And we'll start our vocabulary in this class today. And verses. So what's the ratio? 10% on verses. 10% on spoken Sanskrit, like I've done at the beginning, and 80% will be grammar here in this class. So I'll be on the board of doing you know, all sorts of um, demonstrations, so that's the order. And one thing about Sanskrit is that it is an oral language. For example, the Rishis used to remember the entire Veda. So they, we still have that. I still know some people who can recite the entire Yajur Veda or the Sama Veda. And for this reason, articulation of Sanskrit is paramount. Because the way it works is if you say a word, you should be able to spell it according to how the tongue moves in the mouth or the, uh, the, the mouth or the lips move. So this means that precision in Sanskrit in terms of speaking it or sounding it is crucial. So this means we will spend uh, some time on uh, the words. Also, how many speak uh, Tamil? Oh, nala rokyam peruge. How many are uh, Hindi speaking? Okay, excellent. So you know Devanagari? Yes. How many do not know Devanagari? Uh, please, I need to see. Okay. So Devanagari will be crucial um, because Devanagari is part of Sanskrit. There is no Sanskrit without them. They go hand in hand. So we will learn also from the beginning. And I will do this very slowly as though we are in you know, grade school and then we will build up. Why do I say grade school? I don't mean to put it down, but as in, I know how the brain works. Simple beginning and then we will build up very carefully. And how many hours do we need per Sanskrit for, uh, per week to get good at this? Per week? Two hours? Uh, very good. I like that. Okay. Uh, my, uh, my teacher, McComas Tyler, he's the head of the uh, uh, ANU. I think he's still teaching. I'm not sure. But he's one of the top Sanskrit um, in, uh, speakers in Australia. And he said 10 hours. He said 10 best hours per week. I thought this was too little. <laughs> So when I got into the classes, I used to spend, I'm, I'm not kidding, 15 hours a day for about six months. Yeah. And I still thought it was too little. Right? Now, this depends. Um, you know, if you're extreme or if you want to just moderation, then you can spend five hours. But the point is two to five hours, okay, good. Five to ten hours, better. <laughs> and then afterwards, I'm not going to say more because my teacher said ten hours, so I'm not going to go over ten hours. Okay, so I'm just going to stick with what he said. 
So this means to get the straight from the beginning, if you have to now evaluate, do I have 10 hours every week? Do I have five hours? Okay. So that has to be assigned. If not, then what's going to happen is we will fall behind. And if you fall behind one single lesson, I promise you, it will be impossible to recover because lesson one today will be like easy, skating on ice. Lesson two and lesson three will already be, you know, we're getting into it, okay? Because lesson one, we don't want to overwhelm you. So this means there has to be a level of commitment. So this means that, you know, through your own time, think, do I really have this time? And how do you have the time? How do you have this commitment? You have to have the capacity to say, what do I wish to get out of this? Okay, there has to be motivation there. And we will do groups today, and then you will speak to each other why you want to learn this. For example, for me, it was about precision, uh, the way of relating in precision and sophistication, and Sanskrit delivers that in an extremely high manner. And also because I love to remember, I love to learn, so Sanskrit always allows me opportunity to learn new rules, the new, new words, and um, because it's so deep, 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 deep. So for that reason, that keeps me going um, forever. When I say forever, I mean till the day I die. Uh, and then that's my Sanskrit career, till the last breath. My teacher has, actually has an um, interesting story. He said that, you know Mahabharata, right? Yeah. He saw the Mahabharata on TV and he thought it was so good that he wanted to learn Sanskrit. Just like that, huh? So one movie, I want to I wanna read the Mahabharata. And not only in English, but he read the entire Mahabharata in Sanskrit. Yeah, that, that is an achievement. So he's got a really nice story. Someone said on the email, which I thought was a brilliant uh, question, and I'm going to address it now, often we're not sure what the language is about on the beginning. So there's a concern in your head, and it goes like this. What does the teacher believe? What does a teacher hold in their mind? So this means one thing that you don't want is the teacher contaminating or coloring in the words with their own perspective. Understand? In other words, my job is to be a value neutral atyapakaha. I'm not interested in putting my own words or my own ideas of what this could mean and then putting a philosophical idea onto it. It's just to be as pure Sanskritish as possible. So I'm saying this so that you can be reassured that I'm not going to contaminate this with um, ideas that later on you'll find, well, this is just his thinking, okay? This is just language. That's all I'm here. I don't, I'm not interested in philosophy. This is a Sanskrit class. Okay? Any questions before we get into our first work? The first question, how do we address you? Mm, good, I haven't thought about that. <laughs> Andre. Okay. Yeah, is that okay? Andre? Yeah. Atiyah Pakaha, teacher. Yeah, it sounds good. Teacher. Yeah, that sounds good. That's more friendly and that's more... Which one? Communicate the name. Andre. Okay. Andre, yeah, okay. Yeah. That's very good. I never thought about it, honestly. Okay, Andre. And um, now, we all in family life, so there could be instances when we miss a Sunday class. Good. Is it likely that you're going to be making it available on? I'm the recording this. Okay. There's a record, and there's a camera on the top. Also, it's recording because I know that you're going to miss. Realistically, you're not going to be able to come to some sessions. Therefore, I'm making this available for you. Also, remember that I'm always skeptical saying that because immediately people say, oh, okay, I don't have to come to class now. Mm. You know, and that really, that starts to reduce the numbers and then that also affects me. So don't now use it as an excuse because, you know, I need the numbers because that's how this happens. So don't now go, oh, go home and go and just watch the video because they might as well just do the webinars and there's great webinars on Sanskrit. Yeah. So the classes is what is where it's at. Okay, slowly we will get into our verse. Okay, I'm teaching this exactly as I've been taught and I went through this course myself two times, so I'm 
quite familiar with it. So let's do our first verse called On Practice. I'm going to chant it slowly and listen intently. This verse is about the importance of practice. So it's very appropriate because Sanskrit is with practice. Abhyaso nahityaktavyo. I'll say it again. Listen. Abhyaso nahityaktavyo. Okay, together. Abhyaso nahityaktavyo. Again. Abhyaso nahityaktavyo. Abhyaso hip. Param balam, so hi param balam. Put your hand in front of your mouth and say param. Param. Is there a puff of air? Param. Wrong. There should no be puff of air because puff of air, the P is unaspirated. There's no puff of air. There's a big difference between palam and palam. Okay, two entirely different words. So when we say abhyaso hi param, that means swallow the p, param balam, param balam, param, and also the b, no puff of air, balam balam. Okay. Now abhyaso, this is called an aspiration. Whenever you have an h, that's rule number one. When an h, oh, actually you don't have to put this as rule because we'll learn the letters. Uh, ab, so ab, that's where the puff of air comes. So ab, abhyaso. So do this with puff of air. Abhyaso. So you should blow away your hand. Okay? I'm exaggerating, but just to let you know. Anabhyase visham. So anabhyase visham. I'll go first and I'll tell you. Anabhyase visham vidya. Anapyase visham vidya. Again. Anapyase visham vidya. Slower. Anapyase visham vidya. Now. Ajirne bhojanam visham. Ajirne bhojanam visham. So, this is going to be a long I. This means it's a double. It's not E. It's not Ajirne. It's Ajirne. Okay? Again, you can see the BH. So, Bojanam. Okay? So, it's a strong part of it. Bojanam Visham. So, I'm going to do the whole verse and then we'll take, listen. Abhyaso Nahityaktavyo. Abhyaso Hip. Param balam anapyase visham vidya ajirne bhojanam visham. Together. Apyaso nahityaktavyo apyaso hi param balam anapyase visham vidya. Ajirne bhojanam visham. Slower this time. Apyaso nahityaktavyo. Apyaso hi param balam. Anapyase visham vidya. Ajirne bhojanam visham. Okay, who would like to do it? for an Easter egg. <laughs> okay, please. Can I, can I just ask a question? Yeah. Um, what's the difference in pronunciation between the M with the, a dot on top and the M without any... Um, oh, good. Oh, we're going to get into the letters soon. Okay. We're going to get into the letters. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Don't worry. So all of these... You think I'm going to show you this without going through the letters? No. <laughs> all of these letters we'll, we'll learn one by one the ISTA and the Devanagari. So don't worry, this is just a verse. I'm not talking about the grammar and the, le the writings now. Okay, so, could actually who wants to go for, uh, yes? Could you please repeat that? Tiak 
Tiaktavio. Tiak, Tiak, Tiaktavio. Any other confusing words? No? Okay, who would like to have a go? Okay, please over there. Tavio, apia so hi param balam, anapia se visham vidya, ajir ne bojanam visham. Oh, incoming! Woo! One more? Okay, over there. Apia so na hi tiaktavio. Apya so hi param balam, anapya se visham vidya, ajir ne bhojanam visham. Very good. Give him a hand. <laughs> One more? One, oh, someone on this side. Someone on this side. Yes? Apya so na hi tiaktavyo, apya so hi param balam, Anapya se visham vidya, ajir ne bhojanam visham. Very good. <laughs> oh, it bounced. Uh, one hand over there, yes? Okay. Apya so na hi tiakta vyo, apya so na hi. So that's your daughter, huh? <laughs> and is he two eggs, huh? No, one is. Okay, one egg. Because I'm running out of eggs already. <laughs> I've got one more, one and a half more hours. Okay, um, okay, so let's see what this means. So a piaso, that means. Okay, you can see there. So a piaso, a piasaha is practice. In other words, practice. He is a filler. The word he is just for the sake of a meter. Meter means the way it's spoken. So a piasaha is not tiaktavyaha to be abandoned. So practice, not abandoned. So practice is not to be abandoned. And then again, a piasaha. Param balam, param balam, we go param, highest <coughs> balam, power. In other words, practice is the highest capacity that a human being can exercise. Yes? Okay, up, up um, you know, it's the maximum it goes up. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah. I'm already stretching the limits. So, practice is not to be abandoned. What practice? The, the Sanskrit practice that we, will, that we are undergoing. And it is the highest power. That means it's the great power in whatever you do in life, in any capacity. To be great at something equals practice. Isn't that obvious? Yes. And then, anapyase visham vidya. So anapyase, we can look here. Anapyasaha, that means not practice. What about non-practice? Visham vidya. So we look up here, visham, poison, knowledge. So in other words, in the, by the non-practice, what happens to this knowledge? What happens to vidya? It is poison. This means if we keep on learning, 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 and don't practice, then it is as good as what? It is as good as ajirne, we go here, uh, we go ajirnam is indigest. This is ajir. This is uh, locative. That means indigestion. That means in indigestion. Bojanam food, and then visham. We go look up poison. So just like food is poisonous in when it's non digested, when it's not digested, in the same way, knowledge practice is or knowledge is poisonous when it is not. Apyasaha, when it's not in practice mode. Okay, so that's our first lesson today. So this means this is about practice and not just listening. Okay, one more time and then we move on. So I have one question. Like, yes? Apyaso, nahi, there are two, like, nahi is like divided into two letters, right? Ah. 
So normally in Hindi, they say like Nahi in six one word. What is the difference? Oh no, <laughs> no, it's not. Um, Nahi like no, you mean? Oh, this is different. So na means no, and he uh, is a filler. Uh, can I add that something? Nahi is actually Devnagri. It's a real Nahi. Yeah. This is how we write in Hindi. Na has become a short version of Nahi. But Nahi is actually name is no. So it's yeah. just the Nahi together. Uh. In, in Hindi, we write, if we need to write no, uh. then it is how it's spelled. Nahi, na, and he together. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. Meaning is different. But here the meaning is different. Nahi. Yeah, that's right. Okay. I don't know that. He, that word is written in Nahi. It's different. Yeah. Yeah. Matra is the other one. Other I don't know. I will also be learning from you, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I'm as student as you are. We're all teachers and students. Apias, apias, huh? I've always grown up. But the understanding that abhyas means study. Yeah. Is it, can, are the two meanings interchangeable? Yeah, that's a good question. So a context always changes the word. Yes. Yeah. So, you see, if we look at this literally, then it's going to be like um, practice not to be abandoned. Mm -hmm. But you say practice is not to be. So you make it into a, into a flow, into a context. Yeah. Actually, I've noticed that when you say these kind of slogans or whatever, there is a tone to it. It's like a poetic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So how, you, how we need to speak. With it. Yeah, so that's called a meter. That means the way that it's um, chanted. So there's many meters in Sanskrit, and this is one of the meters. Do, would you like to hear it? And then, okay. Yes, yeah. Apyaso nahityaktavyo, apyaso hiparambalam, anapyase visham vidya, ajirne bhojanam visham. Okay, so this is something that you can polish through time. Uh, at the beginning, I'm not expecting you to have this uh, meter, but over time it's useful because that's the point. Okay, together one more time with this meter, please. Apyaso nahityaktavyo, apyaso hiparambalam, anapyase visham vidya, ajirne bhojanam visham. Okay, good. Now, let's do group work <laughs> now it's your turn huh before we do that we will go on to this is my curriculum that's why I'm looking at it because the teacher needs to know what they're going through okay so this is the spoken Sanskrit part let's learn our first words by the way I know we will be writing a lot and I will create forward slash Sanskrit on the website so the resources that I'm putting up here will be on forward slash Sanskrit. That way you're not missing on anything that forward slash Sanskrit. Yes, Vedanta forward slash Sanskrit. Okay. And the videos will also go on forward slash Sanskrit. Yeah. Okay. I will expect you to remember this and I will test us next week or fortnight. We will decide which one. So let's do some practice here. This is what we say when we speak. Namo Namaha. Namo Namaha. Now, when you say Namo, notice where my tongue is. Namo Namaha. Namo Namaha. Okay. We'll get more into the words uh, where the tongue goes. And also the O is, is that short or long? Long. O is always long. We don't say Namo Namaha. We say Namo Namaha. So if you say Namo Namaha, 100% incorrect. Namo Namaha. Okay. Namo Namaha. Yeah. I will exaggerate um, for the sake of making it obvious, but don't do that in real life. <laughs> so we spoke what Namo means. That means I acknowledge, I bow to you in respect as a human being. Now, bhavataha nama kim. Bhavataha 
नाम किम भवतः नाम किम नाम यू सी दैट्स लॉन्ग ए एंड व्हाट इज ए भवतः सर दैट मींस जेंटलमैन सो इन अदर वर्ड्स सर नेम व्हाट लिटरली भवतः नाम किम किम मींस व्हाट सो सर नेम व्हाट एंड देन यू से द नेम सो now you know going to that answer so if you translate what is your name sir so b if you say b aspiration please b so bhava ta ha bhava ta ha when you say that th should be at uh, uh, touching the roof of the mouth uh, the teeth bhava ta ha bhava ta ha good now nama nama kim kim is easy So sir what is your name let's say that again bhavataha nama kim three more times bhavataha nama kim bhavataha nama kim bhavataha nama kim bhavataha nama kim okay what's bhavataha nama kim repetition please that's how we remember okay that's the only way to remember Now if bhavataha is gentleman then bhavatyaha is madam obviously it's not that long but you get the idea so bhavatyaha namakim bhavatyaha namakim bhavatyaha namakim bhavatyaha namakim madam what is your name and then bhavatyaha says mama nama and then name mama nama mama nama remember the long a nama mama nama we say ne nama 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 just just right before the uh, front teeth and then if you want to ask are you well you will say bhavataha kushalam asti wa bhavataha kushalam asti wa bhavataha kushalam asti wa okay so, wait so bhavataha we know kush so sh will be like shoe that kind of shoe so kushalam kushalam that's easy kushalam that means that means wellness and then asti that means is that means is there existence of wellness for you sir that <laughs> you know it's a different way of saying it so Uh, sir is there well is there wellness of you is there existence of wellness so bhavataha kusham asti wa wa now i said wa in the introduction or friend it means or but here where's the or here so this is a different kind of wa this is a question when you put a wa at the end equals question so that's you write this rule down wa at the end equals question so sorry question is it more like a w or more like a v for what the way you say yeah, yeah. more like a w yeah good good because we're going to get into the actual pronunciation of letters see when you say um the english speakers will say v very good um it's not v it's between v and w so it's wa So just before you say uh, before you complete the v you turn it into a wa so wa so say v v v normal v and then before you finish you go wa wa but it's very subtle yeah it's not going to be um asti wa right so it's asti wa asti wa. i'll slow down asti wa asti wa asti wa asti wa asti wa asti wa wa yeah okay let's say the wrong way just so we can distinguish asti va wrong asti va wrong asti wa correct okay so uh, now bhavatya ha kushalam asti wa 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 
good. Always uh, three times that's the default that we repeat anything. Now, hopefully if you're well, you will say, um, which means, yes, um. That means the yes is never going to be anything other than um. It's always going to be um. When you say um, yes. So if someone asks a question and the answer is yes, I can say um. So um, mama, that means my kushalam, my wellness is, my wellness exists. Um, mama kushalamasti. Um, mama kushalamasti. Ah, mama kushala masti. Ah, mama kushala masti. Okay. And then, uh, if we are not feeling well, then we'll say nahi. No, nahi. Mama kushala nasti. Nahi. Mama kushala nasti. Nahi. Mama kushalam nasti. Nahi. Mama kushalam nasti. You're not so uh, motivated to say no. You're more like, ah, mama kushalam nasti. <laughs> okay. Uttamam. 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 Say uttamam. Uttamam. Excellent. So this is a common, you can say, oh, good, that's, I understand, uttamam, okay. Remember the tongue is uttamam, 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 okay. I'm not joking because we have to get the, you know, the actual uh, tongue position. And then, remember the sh is like the shoe. Should aspiration should should hum should hum now lower the th should hum should hum should hum should hum that means excellent not excellent uh, correct should hum the h after the b and the h after the d we still expire so say again there's a h baba ta ha yeah and then uh, where were we down here? Uh, yeah. Should Yeah, excellent. Aspiration, yeah. That's why I said at the beginning when there's an H and there's something going on, it's probably an aspiration. Should dham. Correct. And then in Sanskrit, when you put the word a in the front, 99% of the cases it will turn it into the opposite. So if it's should dham correct, then a should dham has to be not correct, incorrect. Good. Ashudham. Yes, please. Ashudham. Ashudham. Yes? Yeah, that will be for, that's why I say 99% of the cases. Huh? For some cases, like Atma will be Anatma. Yeah, yeah, good. So um, that's a good point. I like the participation. Actually, I'm going to give you an egg because I like the question for some reason. <laughs> it was going in her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. Yes? Mm? Uh, can them also be pure and impure? Yeah, good. So, should, if you look up shuddham, I'll give you the references to the dictionary. Every word approximately will have about 20 definitions. And one of them would be purity. Cleanliness. Okay, good. Um, just going back to the one line before where it's nasty. Nasty. Uh, because in oh, first nasty, yeah. before we said astita and nasty. Does nasty mean uh, does it exist? Is that how it looks? Oh, good, excellent. Okay, one egg here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is uh, what we call sandhi. So this is called na asti. Na means not, asti is. That means not, not exists. So if you put it together, nasty. So if you have na, plus asti, uh, we will get into this later, na, and then asti, okay, you join the a's, equals long a, therefore you have nasty, okay, that's a shorter way to say it, don't worry about these uh, sun heroes, that's when 90% of the class went. <laughs> <laughs> 
That slide's gonna come much later. Uh, okay. Kripaya. 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 So, kr, um, kr, like Spanish. Imagine it's Spanish or something. Kr, 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 and then no aspiration. Kripaya. Swallow the p, not krp. Kripaya. 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 Okay, please. What's kripaya? What's please? No, you emo you got emotion. What's please? <laughs> huh? Is it kri or kru? Kri. No, it's no, it's not kru. It's not kri. Um, it's kr. Kr. And it's not it's, and it's not kri either. Yeah. Krishna. Same as Krishna. Yeah, excellent. Like Krishna. Um, you're probably is relating it to Hindi, huh? Yeah. Because yeah. there is like kru in the word yeah. written. Yeah, it is in Hindi. It's not kru. It is pronounced uh, in Hindi as kru. Yeah. Oh, okay, it's not okay. Yeah. Um, it's in between kri and kru. Kru. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Sanskrit. No one has an advantage because um, the Westerners. They have no previous connection to any of the words, so they're learning from scratch. <laughs> Whereas some other traditions, like through in India, you know, there will be like an overshadowing of yeah. what you already know. So no one has, no one's higher or lower here. We're all on the same. Exactly. Yeah, so you can all feel equal. <laughs> That's good. Uh, okay, and then not like um, Hindi, like Danyavad. This will be Danyavadaha. Danyavadaha. Danya Vadaha Danya Vadaha Danya Vadaha Danya Vadaha Danya Vadaha So there's an aspiration, there's an H there, and then Vadaha. Um, thank you. Literally, by your mercy. That's a lot kinder way to say it. So there's two definitions we can always, we can give you the general definition and we can give you the the you know, deeper what Sanskrit actually entails, what it actually means. And that, for example, here is by your mercy. That means it's a very nice way to say thank you. Yeah, so I will give you sometimes both. Otherwise, it's going to sound like, oh, okay, namo namaha, hello. But it's not just hello, it's a lot more than that. And punar, remember when I said introduction, I say uh, punar, um, I said punar jalam pibami. In other words, again, Jalam, oh, I said jalam. What's jalam? Water. Water, and what is chayam? Drink. Chayam is. No, chalam is. No, no, no. Intake. Huh? Intake. Uh, chayam is. Uh, this, it's also in, in, um, European word. Um, ch chai. Chayam, a uh, tea. Excellent, yeah. Who said that? Oh, you sound <laughs> like the old pervasive voice. <laughs> yeah, so chayam is, in other words, I said punar chayam pibami. So again, tea pibami, I drink. Again, I will drink this tea. So now we say punar milamaha. Punar milamaha. Punar milamaha. Punar milamaha. Punar milamaha. Which means until we... Until we say Namo Namaha again to each other. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> punar Milamaha. Remember those long A's there. If you say Milamaha, that is called Ashutam. Okay? These are letters we will learn starting today. Okay, so next time we will go through this and we will go through the verse. I will expect two things so far. To memorize all of these, that means you cover one side and then you recall, and then cover the other side and then recall. And then also we said, should be memorized also. Okay, the whole verse, by heart. Because Sanskrit is by ex exercising your mind. If we just sort of go read it, it's fine, but what much better is to remember it. Because the whole Vedic culture relies on remembering. It's a high, it's a very high value to be able to remember. Yeah? Yeah, that's why I said forward slash Sanskrit. Okay. Oh, okay, now before we move on, okay. 
did not, not say we're gonna do group work. So here's how it's gonna work. I'm going to hand out, um, fortunately it's not enough. Uh, so you can take the photo, but don't take it yet, I'll hand out first. And what's gonna happen is, you're going to communicate with three people, okay? And you're going to have a conversation. You're going to say, Namo Namaha, Namo Namaha, yeah. Babatyaha, Namakim, Mama Nama, etc. And then uh, you will say, um, Babatyaha, Kushalamastiwa. And she will say, Nahi, Mama Kushalamasti. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or she will say something else. Depends how you feel, so be honest. And I want you, and then you also say, Asni, Mama Kushalamasti. Okay, so you say, Am, and also no. And then you will say, in both cases, you say Utamam. Nahi mama kushal nasty Utamam. And and then and then also you can say um, mm -mm, I think you're lying. So you say Ashutam. <laughs> and then if you say Ashutam, she should say. Oh, okay, you know, she's, she should say, okay, oh, mama kushalamasti. Okay. <laughs> so, and then, and then uh, you say, um, uh, um, thank you, okay, after they say how they are. So, how are you? I'm good. Uh, no, what's your name? My name is X. How are you? I'm good. I'm not good. Excellent. And then uh, you will say, thank you. And then you will say, until we meet, punar milamaha, until we meet again. And then swap roles. Yeah, because now you also communicate with them, yeah? And then I want you to say just one short, simple sentence. It doesn't take a lot of time. We need one hour for grammar. Um, why you are learning this? Short, because three people, remember? Don't make it a big story, please. I expect this in uh, seven to eight minutes, okay? So here we go. Let's hand out um, this. So this one... One le um, one for each person. Oh, sorry, one for two people, so you can both share. Hand out quick, quick. Okay, so how are you? Uh, greetings. How are you? What's your name? How are you? And then, thank you. Find a partner. And if you're not, and you can also do three people together. Just, just uh, careful with this. That's okay, begin, begin.
Find someone else, find someone else, don't just with one person, I want you to have uh, three, two more people. Sanskrit. What was that? Trans, uh, first, the site that we need to go to to get the definition was it? Yes, Vidya for Yes, Vedanta for yes, Sanskrit. 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 Yeah. Yes, Vedanta for Sanskrit. You are already 
Let's get into now the grammar. We will learn about vowels uh, in Devanagari. That means we will learn the first letters. And we will learn how to put basic sentences regarding a he goes or she goes or he asks or she asks. Okay, we will learn these two and how to put them using the word cha and. So let's get into this. Okay. I will guide us through every one of these points and you can also take notes. So we're on number one now. Let's read number one. Can you see? Okay. In Sanskrit, each letter represents a one and only one sound. This means letter A <coughs> is never going to be a. Uh. It's always going to be A. Uh. For example, um, if you say apple, you got uh, uh. So that's not, in this case, it will be apple. Okay, it will never go out of its original sound. If you have l, then it's going to be l. It's never going to be la or li or something. It's always going to be exactly as it is sounding originally. So this means if we read the word like Svara, we don't you know, change it like into swara or sweary or something, you know, American or Australian, some. it's just going to be exactly as it is written. Okay, is that clear? One to one ratio. So this is actually the easy part. This means you're never going to have to learn a different sounding of the letter. In English, the letter A may indicate many sounds, but not in Sanskrit, as we explained. The alphabet is systematically arranged according to the structure of the mouth. The structure of the mouth will be taught next time because there is um, a certain way that every letter is sounded and that will depend on what happens with the mouth. We're not going to do that in this session. So this is just a prerequisite what's coming. Okay, so in English, how do we have letters? A, B, C, D. Okay, that's an, an order of some sort. But in Sanskrit, the order is according to the structure of the mouth. That's what the verse is saying here. What does this mean? We will leave this for the next session. I'm not going to get into details now. There are, num point two, there are two <coughs> basic divisions to the alphabet. So alphabet has two divisions. What alphabet? The Sanskrit alphabet. They are vowels and consonants. Vowels are sounded and consonants are manifesting. So this means if you have, for example, um, let me see if I can put this Maybe I'll do this. That's better. Is that small? Hold on. Yeah, that's better. Thank you. Huh? Um, so we have, if you have, so number two, if you say a hum, oops. A hum, okay, good. 
So it says here um, some manifesting. So let's take the word h. So if you say ah, you see how the h manifests from what? <coughs> from the vowels. Or you say m. So ah, ha, m. So from the a ah goes into the m. So the m is a consonant. The h is a consonant, and they both manifest out of the vowels. So therefore, the consonants are manifesting out of what? The vowels. That's what it says. Okay, so manifesting consonants. Okay, so you have, okay, say, ah, just say, ah, 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 ah. Now, how did that h start? Out of what? It manifested out of what? The ah, ah, ha, m. So, m also manifests out of? The vowel, which is a. Ah. Okay, clear? Now, point three. Vowels can either be short, okay, we're talking about vowels, um, like a. Ah. They can either be short, by the way, I'm not going to use the words because it's going to slow down the lessons. Uh, you can learn this at home. So I'm going to use the English instead of these long Sanskrit words. Vowels can either be short or long. So we're talking just about the vowels now, like a. Uh. Short vowels are held for one count, and long vowels are held for two counts. For example, short vowel is like this, a. Uh. Okay? That means equals one count. Now, what does two count mean? So, I'll put, um, okay, ah. If you say two counts, you put a line on top. That means ah. So, this will be equivalent to like that. Okay. Ah. So, there's a big difference. So, there's no correlation between ah and ah. Totally different letters. Like saying Z and Y. That's why I say that the, to put a long A or a long I or long... To express the longs is crucial in Sanskrit. Okay? And then, some vowels are called simple and some are called complex. So we're still talking about the vowels. So what is a simple vowel and what is a complex vowel? Okay. And now it has a little table here. Let's do a little... Okay, here's the simple vowels. Repeat after me. A. Ah. A. Ah. 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 I. 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 U. 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 Er. 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 How do you say er? Um, there's no equivalent in English. Like American, like water. Er. 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 So, er. 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 Uh, where's the tongue when you say uh, top of the mouth? That, like I am ill. Ill, ill, ill. No, there's a little bit more of a, t a t the tongue is on top of the mouth. Retroflex. Uh, 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 uh. Like a New Zealander says, you know, I'm sick, like, uh, uh, uh. I don't think they say that, but anyway. Okay, repeat. I'm just going to say, ah, ah. E, e. U, u. So that's the simple vowels. Now, long vowels. E, e, I. E, e, I. E, e, I. Now, the E is long. Therefore, that's why it says long here. So you go, E, e, e I. I. So if you say E, e wrong. E, if you say E, 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 e that equals shuddham. Okay? Yeah. So, E, I. I. A I. A I. A I. A I. A I. Is a shutam or ashutam? Ashutam. Utamam. Okay. O. O. Ow. O. O. Ow. O. Ow. Now let's do all of them together from the beginning. Ah. Ah. 
一，一，五，五，二，二，二，哎，哎，哦，嗷 ，backwards， 嗷，哦，哎，哎，二，二，二，五，五，一，一，啊，啊 ，Let's do it down。啊！一、五、二、二、哎、哦！啊！一、五、二、哎、奥。OK。Never. Exactly. Hundred percent correct. Good point. OK. All good so far. Yeah. OK. Moving on. In Vedic Sanskrit, there's two kinds of Sanskrit. There's the classical and there's the Vedic. We're learning which one, the classical. The Vedic is a little bit more complex. It's got a lot more rules, a little bit richer, but you're not losing out on the essence of the Vedic Sanskrit by learning the classical Sanskrit. Just put it, it they're 95% the same. Okay. In Vedic Sanskrit, but rarely in classical Sanskrit, the one that we're doing, we're doing classical Sanskrit, there are also vowels held for three counts. So we said a. Eh. So now vowel help, it will be like a. Eh. So we will never encounter a three count vowel. That's all you need to know because we're not doing Vedic Sanskrit. When will you encounter Vedic Sanskrit? If learning like the Rig Veda, you know, Ajur Veda, and so on, the, the classical texts. Okay. Now. So four is just clear. We're not going to encounter three vowels. That's all you need to know. Now let's go on to five. Here is a pronunciation of the vowels. Okay, we already did this. So ah will be as in like America, like ah, America. Is that clear? Ah. ah. Also sa, like sun, sa, ah, sun, ah. Sun. 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 Yeah? Sun. So that's easy. Okay, a would be as in father, father. Okay, that kind of a, father. Uh, e would be as in uh, hit, not heat, but hit, hit. Yeah, hit. If you stop at that he, that that e, that will be e. So also you can say. Different, D, D, different, like D, yeah, D, like D, D, that E, D, different. Okay, so he, E, or different. I'll put this up on the side. E would be as in not gi, even though you can say gi, E, but uh, my teacher said heat, as in heat, heat, heat. Okay, or you can say. Uh, which one is it? He long I fee feel feel feel. Okay, so so heat or feel that kind of e that kind of e. Then u as in put put put. Yeah, or it says here full full u u full. U, that kind of U. Okay, so U as in put or U as in full, full. Not full, double O, but full as in uh, complete. <laughs> uh, and then U would be as in pull, 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 pull. Or boot, boo, boo. Boot, double O, boot. Okay, that kind of O. And then er, the the strange one. Uh, let me see. Okay, it says here r rhythm. R rhythm. R rhythm. R rhythm. R rhythm. So it is kind of like an American water. R rhythm. R r. Notice where your tongue, be conscious of your tongue. Rhythm. R r r r. Where's the tongue? R r r. Yeah, very on the top, yeah? Not touching entirely. R. Uh, r. Mm, no, that's not. The one with the R sound in Sanskrit. That's a good point, okay. R. 
Yes. Okay, now go go um, Spanish rhythm. 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 Like a motorcycle. Okay? So R would be like an introduction and then R would be the real deal. Okay. And then R would be, see it says here nothing, but here it says read. R, read, R, R. Just extend the R. R, R. Like read. Okay, next. L would be as in, uh, as in ju juvelry, juvelry, juvelry. Yeah. Juvelry. It says here nothing again. A would be as in get. 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 Or evade. 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 And then I would be as in delight. 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 The I is emphasis. Delight. And then here it says delight also. O would be as in pot. Hot or core, core or core, and then ow would be as in loud, ow or now, that ow, now, ow, that's correct. Okay, so now we have all the uh, pronunciations right. So obviously, you go home and go through the list. Yeah, that's, I think that's enough. Good, okay, number uh, six. Number six, the lines and dots. Number five. We haven't got five. No, see, we just went through that. You should have told me. I thought it was on the screen. Like those words are different. Yeah, that's why I corrected because my teacher gave me the correct words, and I'm also using the international standard. Okay, number six. So we just went through this, yeah? Number five. The lines and dots are called diacritics. They are used because the Sanskrit alphabet has more letters than the English alphabet. Diacritics are combined with Roman letters to represent new sounds. So what is a diacritic? A diacritic is, for example, uh, E, E, uh, or R, R, okay? So these dots are called diacritics, or L, that, so it's an L, but it's got a dot underneath. That's called a diacritic. So whenever you see uh, dots or lines on Roman letters yes. equals diacritics. And we're going to learn all of them because I will talk about the standard of writing Sanskrit a little bit later between ISTA, ITRANS, uh, Harvard, Kyoto, and the civil systems you can... But I want us to learn the diacritic method because that's the most accurate method that represents Devanagari and Devanagari is the standard of Sanskrit. Okay. Also, if you take, for example, um, why it's important, if you take the word laya, laya and, so laya and laya. Okay, so they have different meanings. For example, so laya is weapon. Long A, Laya, weapon. But Laya is disillusion. Totally different. So if you want to tell me I want to buy a weapon and you say, you know, give me a Laya, you know, I want to buy a disillusion, so I'm not going to understand you. So that's why I say emphasis on the longs is highly crucial. Solution as in fluid or solution as an answer? Huh? When you say solution, is it a fluid solution or an answer? No, 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 solution. Illusion. illusion. Yeah, no, no, resolution or, resolution. or disillusion. Or resolvement, to resolve, to unmanifest. That's liar, is it? Yeah, without the lungs. Yeah, liar. So is it how would you say liar or liar? Liar. Liar. Yeah, liar is the solution. 
Liar is weapon. So they stretch. Liar. Yeah, liar. Because it's a long A. We just said la, la. as in father. Yeah. 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 Liar. Not like a liar, you know. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I understand at the beginning it's going to be like that. Now, number seven. A vowel by itself or a consonant or group of consonants. I'll go slow. A vowel by itself, like an A, or a consonant, or a group of a cluster of consonants, followed by a vowel equals syllable. For example, not syllable, um, yeah, it is syllable. For example, you say, I'll do in English. Great. Now, you see how the GR is followed by a vowel? The GR is what? A consonant. It's followed by a what? A vowel. Therefore, GRE is a syllable. So, in the same way, if you take in Sanskrit, for example, AKSHARA. Okay, so AKSHA. See the vowel? So, therefore, the entire thing becomes a syllable. AKSHA. Ra. So how do you know what a syllable is in Sanskrit? A group of consonants followed by a vowel. A group of consonants, a aksh, a. You can't just say a is now a syllable by itself. Mm. Wouldn't that be three syllable like aksh, ra? Well, you can say aksh, ra, okay. Aksh, you can also say ak akshara, but I just say akshara. Akshara. Yeah. Yeah. Or you can say akshara. But it sounds easy. Akshara. Yeah. You gotta be a little bit fluid. Don't, don't make it extremely, you know, like it's gonna be like that. Whatever is easier for you. Yeah. Is that cl clear, that point? Yeah. Okay. Next point. Sanskrit is written in Devanagari script. The word Devanagari means the word um, Nagari on the top. The Nagari means belonging to a city. And Deva, gods. In other words, if gods were to live in a city, what language would they use to write? Devi. Devanagari. In other words, it's a very special, highly refined uh, script to use. Therefore, Devanagari is the language of the gods which use in their city where they live. Yeah. There are no capital letters also in Sanskrit. So you never write starting with a capital letter, full stop, capital letter, all small letters. That's another point. If I see a capital letter, Ashutam. <laughs> <laughs> Number nine. Question. So when you have sentences, I don't know if they're sentences, but if there are, does that mean you just move on to the next? Like, yeah, you put a, you, 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 it. Like you, so you have a line? sentence, for example, word, yeah. and then new line, word, Implying end of the sentence that will be ins that will, you learn about this. Yeah, but no full stop yeah. and no capital letters like that Clear Huh What And the first line yeah. and the double is the end of the paragraph Also, uh, Devanagari, is, Sanskrit is written in a local language, so you don't have to write it in Devanagari, you can write it in Cyrillic, Tamil script, uh, you can write it in Chinese, you can write it in the uh, EAST method that we're going to learn about, whatever language, as long as it absolutely represents the very letters that it is intended to represent. Therefore, it is not vital to write it in Devanagari, you can write it in whatever script 
you prefer, but it has to match the Devanagari words. And the Devanagari, is that the northern or southern Indian? North. North, good, yeah. You know that, yeah. Number nine, the ideal way to learn the script will be to memorize approximately one letter each day. Okay, that doesn't matter how many letters, we'll, I'll, I'll tell you how many. <laughs> <laughs> Number 10, uh, six vowels in Devanagari will be learned now. Okay, let's learn these letters now. So. I still prefer the whiteboard. Um, this sounds a little bit superficial to me. So number one. So we're gonna learn. How does how do you say ah? Uh? Uh. Oh, it's obvious. I said it. How do you say ah? Uh? Uh. And how do you say e? E. 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 Ooh. 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 Okay. So let's do ah. Uh. Okay. So we know ah, uh, Roman, easy. Ah. Uh, Long. long. So, ah, uh, uh. long. So, whenever we put a line on top, it calls long. Now, Sanskrit. Imagine a teenager who has his first three hairs starting to grow. <laughs> and he's supposed to go to a party. And they're sticking out. Yeah. Three hairs are sticking out. And then someone points out, and he goes, oh! And he decides to lead them because he likes them. <laughs> so, imagine a teenager, a face, okay, and there's the back of a teenager. And um, we have three hairs sticking out. One, two, three. And then, what goes on the top of the house always? Roof. roof. If you don't have a roof, then it's not a house. Then you know, just find something else. So you put a roof. In other words, left to right, top to bottom, left to right, left to right, left to right, left to right. You understand? So if you don't know, start writing this down because we need to practice. Again. Teenager. Three hairs, left to right, roof comes last, always on the house, does it not? Yes. Okay, clear? Now, alternative way is number th three, but a bigger, it's like a fatter three, it's like a full. And then, you can know, that's easy, right? And then it is um, leaning on a pole. It's a person that's very hungry. It's a very full and they're about to fall over, so they're hanging onto a pole. So there's an arm and there's a pole. Okay? And then what comes last? Roof. Roof. Therefore, the order is top to bottom, right? Top to bottom, left to right. So the same letter can be written two ways. Huh? Yeah, two ways, yeah. So you have to learn this because you're going to see both in the, in, the, um, in the scripts. Okay, so one, teenager, and two is the fat person who is about to fall over, like that. Both are. The okay. bottom one is more, well, I've come across it more often than the top one. Um, in Sanskrit, you will see both. You will see both. Yeah, this is not, um, uh, don't confuse it now with um, Hindi. Yeah. I'm going to put it here because it's going to take the time erasing things over. Okay? So is there a rule about which one to use as well? Uh, no, there, is no good, there is no rule. You have to identify both of them. Okay. You can choose if you want to create your own content, but yeah. to, uh, to read it, you have to know both of them. Okay. Because you will see, it depends on the font. If you choose Sanskrit 2003 font in Microsoft Word, you will probably see one or the other. Right? So it depends on the font. And I'm, I want to tell you all of them. Next one will be A. Ah. So again, we have a ah, okay? Now we're doing ah. We have a, a teenager, same thing. Top to bottom, left to right, left to right, left to right. Three hairs. Roof always goes last. Left to right. 
Okay, and then you also have one more line down. That means ah, that means get along. Alternative method is again you go ah, number three, fat number three, leaning over onto two poles, <coughs> and then roof last. Okay, so that's the exact order. Got it? Yeah. Okay, next. E. Imagine a snake, and the snake is trying to find its way somewhere. So we will start with, you know, it's like obviously coming out of a hole. The hole is always straight. That's why it's straight. And then its snake is like, <laughs> and then it decides to um, take a hike or something. I don't know, like, it goes, Bleh. you know, loses its energy, so it falters. And then roof goes last. Again, watch the order. Line down. And then roof last. Okay? That's E. How confident are we on E? How confident are we on writing this down? Yeah. Okay, good. Now, E. E. On the book, it says the arrow for R, it points from four out from the line, five out from the line. The arrow is pointing out, not from left to right, from right to left. Does that matter? Where? So it goes, for the three hairs, it goes four right to left, five right to left. Yeah. Does that not, does it not matter? Oh, okay, whichever way you prefer. Okay, I just yeah. did it consistently. Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah. so can you also do like this. If you want to do it like here, he, like, okay, it doesn't like, matter. like whatever your hand wants to do. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I like that you point out the details. It's very good. Because it also keeps me sharp. Uh, and I need help with that. It reacts to the weather. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's actually a good point because hairs grow from uh, inside out, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, E will be uh, same thing, Psst, down, and then roof, and then you add a little hook. Hold on, this is a little bit of a jagged hook, a nice hook, okay? So again, I'll do the order, follow, down, going down, going down, going down, left to right, and then you can do like that. If I'm reading it correctly, the, the hook is second and the top line, the roof is last. Yeah, okay. Um, this, is, this is like beginner to tell you which order. I can also do it the way that I write. So, so we can do it that way as well. Yeah, as long as it's natural with your hand. Okay, this is just telling you like on the beginning. But over time, you will start to change your own style. Right, and I'm not doing this first time, so for me it's a little bit of you know how I'm used to. Yeah. So that's also involved there. So uh, to answer that, so you can say, so which okay, let's do the exact order as E. We go like this. First down. Okay, that's number one, and then it says number two, which is really weird for me, and then it goes roof. Why is my roof so? <laughs> Because <laughs> I want my hand. Okay. The point is, um, it, for beginners, a roof always goes last. Therefore, that would be correct yeah. on the beginning. Yeah. Ooh. No, not ooh. 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 Okay. Just like a number three, not as fat as number, uh, not as fat as ah, it would be, one second, like that. Actually, we'll do it, sorry. It will be like that. Okay, not completely. Um, not full circle for both. And then roof goes last. Yes, question over there? Hmm? Yeah, the first o and R have two alternates. O and R have two alternates, writing with um, the three, like the R, the R. Yeah, the R can be written in two different 
different ways, but the, the, the teenager and the fat. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. Just listen to. It. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, always the same. I has two ways. I will tell you if there's two different okay. methods, yeah, and I'll write them both. Sometimes I want at the beginning because it's going to be overwhelming, so I'll hold off and then we'll do it uh, later. Uh, so that's ooh. So again, ooh, and then line. Okay. In other words, top to bottom, top to bottom, like that. I know it's inconsistent, but anyway, you know, that's just the way you write. And then U would be same thing, top to bottom. See, I'm doing the roof, I'm not last, that's my way. And then you do a little line down, like that. Okay, again, top to bottom, left to right, and then roof goes last. I shall stick with the roof goes last because it's fair for you. Uh, um, it clear? Yeah. Okay. Now, Sanskrit roots. So I expect, to know, I expect you to know all this by next week. Sanskrit, this is now grammar, so you can put a new section on a piece of paper, grammar. So now we're officially going into our first grammar lesson. Sanskrit roots are divided into 10 classes. Okay, what is a root? A root is a the essence of a word. A root, out of the root comes different words. And this root is divided into 10 classes, which forms a present stem. So far, what we have learned is we have a root. It has 10 classes. And out of this root, we can make um, a present stem. So root, stem. First thing, root, out of the root, you can make a stem. Is that clear? Root, number two, stem. So how do you create a stem out of the root? I know you're going to ask what is a root and what is a stem. We'll get to that. We will study the four classes in whose stems and in a. So out of these 10, we will study four whose stem ends in a. Sorry, not there. So in other words, there's a word word, 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 and then the word ends in a. Understand? So the stem, we'll put a stem here, the word, whatever it is, and then that word will end in an a. So what are we going to study? We're going to study words which end in a. Simple. In this class or throughout the course? Huh? Is that just in this class? Yeah, in this class, yeah. In the next 15 minutes. The root written with A, like this, this is how you write a root, forms a stem. So out of the root, you have a stem. And then the stem adds an ending. To form a verb. So root, stem, ending, verb. So you have a root, and then you go create a stem out of the root. The stem, in our case, will end in an a, and then you add an ending, and then equals verb. Clear? For example, you take the root 
gum. So that's the original word. If you look up the roots in Sanskrit, you will have over 2,000 roots in Sanskrit. And one of those 2,000 is gum. Now, what do we say? Out of the root, you make a stem. So using a special formula, which we're not going to speak about, you create a word called gacha. So gacha is a stem. Yeah? Gacha is a stem. And gacha, so gum means go. The word, the original root word gum, if you look it up, means just to go. And then gacha also in this case means to go. And then it says you, you add an ending to make it into a verb. So now you have gacha plus ending equals, for example, in this case, it would be gacha t. So you put a t and that equals he or she or it. What happens? What happens to he, she, or it? Yes. Goes. In other words, the T made sense out of the word gacha. Now it has context. So the gacha is a value neutral stem. Onto the stem, you can add an ending and then make a verb out of it and use it in actual real life speaking. Now, number two. Verbs are in three persons. So this verb, gachati, equals three persons. Not three people as in, um, but just um, as in how to express this verb. There's a third, there's a first person, second person, and third person. First person is um, I. First person always talks about I. Second person always talks about you. Third person always talks about he, she, or it. So which is gachati now? Third person, okay. So if you want to say, so he goes, so if you want to say I go, obviously what are you going to change? The T-I. Into what? In this case, it will be gachami, into ami. So therefore, gacha plus ami equals gachami. Number three. The stem stays the same, as we just explained. The stem stays the same, but the ending changes for first person, second person, and third person. And this form is called the present indicative. So present indicative, you say, uh, means something that is going on in the present tense. What's the present indicative? Going on in now. For example, to go is a present indicative. Why? Because it is a present tense verb. I know you're already starting to fall asleep, I can see, because as soon as teaching comes, energy drops. Very common. <laughs> In other words, why is it called a present indicative? Because it indicates a present tense. Okay. So let's do a difference. So first person is gachami. So you have gacha plus ami equals... Remember the two A's equals A, so therefore, gacha me. Okay, that means I go. So you go equals gacha T. Say again, gacha T. I go gacha me. Gacha me. You, uh, uh, he, he, she, or it goes. I go. Good, I like participation. And then we have second person, which is gacha plus C. Therefore, you have gacha C. So you go gacha C, gacha C. I go, he, she goes, 
It goes, he goes, I go, you go, I go, he goes, you go, you go, gotcha see. I go, you go, you go, he goes, she goes, it goes, I go, you go. Excellent. Uttamam. Vocabulary. Okay, grammar done. Yeah. Huh? Say again. No, 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 not not they. We're not using we're not using plural yet, as in um, they all. Not yet. Okay, that will come later. So, okay, good question. So he just one. Sing, this is all singular. So one he, one she, one it, one you, one I. Next time we'll do two, and then next time we will do all, like all they, all you, like all you, and all we. Okay, good point. Yeah, question. Does the stem always have similar kind of meaning as the, go, as the root, or can they change? The what, the gacha? No, the no, no, for any root, like, would the stem always have a similar kind of meaning to the root? Like in this case, gum means go, yeah. gacha also means similar to go. Good, excellent point. So whenever you see the word, anything created out of gum will imply, will entail Something that moves, something that goes, something that goes from A to B, something that arrives. And that's always true for the old two For all words. So this is how you actually can do one word and you can, whenever you see a difference in that word, you can know, aha, okay, so I know it means go, but I can get the context out of this word. And I can infer that it has to do something with going on the basis of the original word, gum, meaning to go. Okay, so that's how you can, um, you don't have to remember so many words, you just remember the roots, and out of the roots, you can get the context of the word, which is of the, that means of the stem. Got it? Okay, vocabulary. Almost done, don't worry. Um, number one, the vocabulary in Sanskrit and in English here, is it, here it is. Each verb appears in its root form, followed by third person singular form. What is third person singular? Oh, uh, egg. Egg. Yeah, I heard you this time. Huh? Yeah, you, you all deserve eggs because you all said it also. Okay, each verb appears in the root form, originally, followed by a third person singular form. The stem can be found by removing the endings. So, how do you know what the stem is? Gacha me. So Oops. the ending syllable, Gat so we have to remove the ending syllable. Yeah, so, so this means what? You have to know the endings in order to extract the stem. stem. Okay, so this means you have to memorize the endings to know what the stem is, thus to know what the root means. Memory. So that's always, that's always me, T, C. Huh? Yeah. yeah. It's only going to be the, as long as it's singular, it's only going to be first person me, second person C, and third person T. Yeah. Ami, C, T. C, T. Ami, C, Ami. Army City. That's good. That's a good memory. Uh, mnemonic. Army City. <laughs> okay, so Sanskrit we have gum. So that's the root. Uh, a gacha. So out of that root, you create a stem. Gacha plus ending. T equals he or she goes. Okay. And now cha. The word cha means and. So if I say gachati, gachami cha, what did I say? No, no, okay. Why, why did I not say gachati cha gachami? I said gachami gachati cha. In other words, gachami, I go, gachati. He and he goes. I go and he goes. I go and she goes. I goes and it goes. If I say 
Gachati Gachasicha. I go. I go. You mean you go? I, I got gacha si. Okay, again. Gacha si, gacha si, gacha ti cha. I you and you go. Okay, slow. Okay, gacha ti, gacha si cha. One person. He goes. I go and you go too. Gacha si, gacha ti cha. And he goes. Okay. Gachami Gachasicha. I third person you go. Yeah. So Gachami Gachasicha. I go and you go. Gachasicha. You can also say now gach you're not gonna see this often, but you can say gachasicha gachami. You go and I go. The proper way in Sanskrit is you put the ch after. In other words, gachami, gachasi, cha. So it's not, it's not like English. So you have to remember that. In other words, in English equivalent, it will be eggs and bacon. But here in Sanskrit, it will be eggs, bacon, and. Okay? The next word is prach. Five more minutes. Hold it. So we have the word uh, prach, which is root, prach, equals ask. And then obviously put the, and then prach. And you create a stem using a special combination and you get prachati. Prachati. Okay, remember this is this this is the ending here. So prach, you get pracha, and you add the ending. That means he what? He asks. So now if I say if I say gachami, prachati cha. Gachami, gachami. Pricha teacher, he and he asks. Okay, again. Okay. Pricha si. No, no, no. Pricha si. You are pricha si. Gachami cha. And I go. So you ask and I go. Pricha si. Pricha teacher. You ask and you go and you go. Ah, yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, she's getting all correct. <laughs> Very good. If I say uh, gachati, gach, uh, gachati, prachati, cha. Okay, good. And uh, gachasi, prachati, cha. She asks. And she asks. Okay, good. Very good. Excellent. Gachami gachaticha. I go. I go. And he goes. He goes. He goes. Prachami gachasicha. I ask and you do. Okay, good. So in the verb itself, there's no distinction between male and female. That comes in like how you ask the question, when you ask the question to. Um, male and female for in the first in the first person singular for both prach and gacha would be he or she. So it includes both a male and a female. Yeah. So this is the good news. You don't have to now distinguish yeah. between you know, if I ask a woman, do I say something different, or if I ask a man something different. So if I ask, um, if I say a she asks, then I say prachasi. If I say he asks, then I say not uh, not prachasi, prachati. If I say he asks, I say prachati. It asks prachati. Prachati, yeah. Prachati for everything. Gachati for everything. Yeah. No gender. Gender will come later. Yeah. And for things as well. Huh? For eat as well. Yeah, of course, for, yeah, yeah. For, for whatever, whatever is word in the singular, whatever we have like first person, uh, first person singular. Yeah, we have um, singular, dual, and 
plural. We will learn duo and plural later. Whatever is in the singular column, that means gachati, gachami, gachati, always has to do with one. That's the rule. Okay. Now for homework, we have sample sentences. Okay, let's go through this. Cover, um, cover the... I'll go like this. Okay. Gachami. I go. I go. Prachati gacha. Okay, prachati. I'm slow. Prachati. Think. Gachami cha. I go. I go. Prachati. Cha. Gachami cha. He asks and I go. Yeah, she asks, he asks, it asks, and I go. Gacha si cha, think. Pracha si cha. You go and you ask. You ask. Yeah, you go and you ask. Why two cha? A good point. So this is, yeah, this is to show you that it is possible to have cha in between. However, for the sake, if you read literature in Sanskrit, you're hardly going to find cha like this. You're going to find cha at the end, and only one cha. So the example, prachati gachami cha, that will be correct in most cases. Yeah, and it's also going to save you a lot of time instead of putting cha cha everywhere. So this means if you're sort of used to English and have to put cha in between, it's not ashudham. Okay, it is just. Um, it's just the way of, huh? It is, yeah, it is not shutam. It is not uh, incorrect. Okay. It is shutam. Huh? Ashutam <laughs> nasty. Yeah? It's not incorrect, but you need to put the other Yeah, exactly. What she said. Yeah, it's okay. If you can do it. Yeah. Yeah. You have the strength to do it. You can. <laughs> yeah. We don't say prachami. Prachami. We say prachati and But we don't say ami, right? We do because it, it, you have to speak to I. I I ask prachami. I ask. If you just say pracha, that means to ask. So so it's value neutral. But who asks prachami? I ask. Who asks? Prachati, you, uh, he or she or it asks. Who asks? Prachasi, you ask. Gacha, by itself, go. go. Who goes? Prachati. Prachati. He goes, she goes, it goes. Who goes? Pracha, uh, gachami. Who goes? I go. Okay. So, let's close. So, the, um, your exercises will be To go through the Devanagari, as we've written, memorize the vocabulary, that means Pracha and Gacha, and also the verses that we spoke about, Apyaso, Nahit, Yaktavyo, okay? Also, Bhavataha, Namakim, that also we have to memorize. And then you just go through these sentences here, this is very easy. What page is that in the book? Huh? Page number, six. Seven. number six. The PDF file would be on the site. Okay, forward slash Sanskrit, I will put the PDF file. Also the verse, the Apiaso verse, and also the spoken Sanskrit. Um, question. I think in earlier emails you said uh, the third edition has some uh, errors. errors yeah. yeah, I don't know what they are. So, so the PDF is fine? Uh, whatever yeah, yeah it's, it's because there's no much difference between third and fourth edition. It's very close. Yeah, so it's generally safe. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so one, uh, why you write this down? Now think realistically. Put emotions aside and look at your life, how much time you re realistically have. So if I were to ask, what would be most appropriate? To do this every week before answering, don't get excited. Emotions, emotions are going to go away anyway. Rational. 
or fortnightly. Give me hands for if you so far think it's possible weekly. Hands up for weekly. Yeah, rational, remember? Realistic. Family, children, work, pressure. I can have fortnightly. Okay, fortnightly will be. Therefore, we will not meet next week. We will meet after next week. Where will you find the dates? Up to date uh, events, forward slash events. Yeah, I always start about 20 minutes before the class. Yeah, and then you can join, yeah. yeah. Just two weeks, next, not next uh, Sunday. After next Sunday. Yeah, wherever that is. Okay. Punar Milamaha. Punar Milamaha. Punar Milamaha.